Hello, welcome to Tamirab Studio. In this video, I wanted to share with you a story of how I worked on this painting. I failed twice when I tried painting it with watercolor and I managed to save it and complete the painting several months later when I introduced another material. There were several very important things that I was reminded of when I was working on the painting, so I wanted to share them to help other artists. My initial plan for this painting was to create a very loose watercolor on the painting, initial wash, and then to use art blocks, which are water soluble and very similar to watercolor pencils, just thicker, to find all the hard edges and then fill in the negative spaces with watercolor, leaving those yellow flowers and maybe even the purple flowers lighter, of course. Even though I tested those art blocks on watercolor before I started on a larger piece, I guess the test wasn't too successful and I still decided to proceed for some reason. <laughs> so the plan failed pretty quickly. I did not like the texture that art blocks created. I couldn't get rid of it when I tried to soften them. And also they were very transparent. So the first lesson I learned, have a definite plan. Don't think that you can figure it out while you're painting, especially with watercolor in a large format like that. Painting can change during the creative process, but we do need to understand the order of painting and the technique before we start. Another problem I encountered, there were so many of those negative spaces that when I started painting them they very quickly turned into dark blotches. I couldn't get any variety of color on those very small areas in those art blocks. Like I said, they're very similar to watercolor pencils. They're just thicker, but they have a lot of transparency. They basically gave me no coverage, so I could not add smaller details with them. I could not create the tangle of grasses and stems that I see in the reference photo. I kept working on this painting for a little while longer, but then realized that I need to just set it aside and take a break. In a few days, I turned my painting over. Fortunately, we can paint on both sides of 300 pound watercolor paper. And I decided to give the watercolor and the painting one more try. This time I did a lot fewer layers. I tried to go dark from the beginning, just leaving a few areas lighter, hoping to achieve that balance between definition and looseness that will let me convey that subject matter, that impression that I wanted. The watercolor looked somewhat better the second time, at least it wasn't so dark, it was more transparent. It still needed a lot of work. I tried tinting white gouache with watercolor to define the yellow flowers a little better, but the color lacked vibrancy, it was too light. I set aside this painting and I considered different options. I thought maybe adding pure gouache to it would be a way to go, but I didn't want to do that. I guess it was just too soon to come to any decision. I had to work on other stuff and forget about this painting for a couple of months. Then one day I picked it up again and I re-evaluated the results. I looked at both sides and I decided that I can do something with that second watercolor on the painting, with my second attempt. A friend very generously gave me a really nice box of Senelia pastels, so I was super excited to try them and that was something else that inspired me to go back to that painting. a fairly big selection of colors. They're very, very soft, but at the same time, they give you pretty good coverage. They're highly pigmented. So first thing I did, I was able to paint all those small details, all those tiny flowers that I see in the reference photo, those little purple flowers that I completely lost in the watercolor on the painting. I painted those and you will see in just a minute me working on those tiny little stems and leaves 
that are everywhere here. But most importantly, I corrected my biggest mistake. I found and defined the focal point. I realized that all the time I've been working on watercolor, I wasn't sure what the focal point is going to be. And when I switched to pastel, I finally made that decision. It's hard to tell in the reference photo. All the flowers look approximately the same, but I decided to concentrate on the three yellow flowers in the forefront. The reference photo has basically two and the third one is kind of turned away, but these are not complicated flowers, so I was able to add the third one because odd number of objects in the focal point always looks better. Another thing that needed to be done is for focal point to have maximum contrast. So you see me adding those uh, shadows and the texture to the yellow flowers with darker pastels. They're great for that. Very easy to create texture with them. And of course, the focal point needs to be the most detailed area in the painting. With uh, various shades of light green and some lighter yellows, I painted the tangle of stems and tiny little leaves that made that photo so attractive to me in the first place. It kind of looks like lace, I think, and this is extremely hard to paint with watercolor, but pastels were perfect for this. It's a line tool. I was able to add all those details fairly quickly and concentrate them, most importantly, around my focal point to give it a lot of visual interest and bring viewers' attention even more to that area. And the upper portion of the painting I kept less detailed and also lighter. All the elements there were closer in tonal range to each other. I also used very dark green color to find a few hard edges around those uh, three yellow flowers in the focal point. I wanted to do that from the beginning with um, watercolor blocks, and I did it to some extent with watercolor, but Signalia Pastel is so soft and so saturated. After I smudged it with my finger, it created that kind of velvety surface, and it looked really nice with more texture than prominent flowers. So this is kind of veering into the technique of working with pastels over watercolor. It can be applied two ways. It can be very textured if we need texture, but also if we smooth it with our fingers or with a tortillon, it can blend with watercolor really well for background areas. And once I created the depth of space, the painting came together and started looking the way I wanted it to look from the very beginning. Last thing I did, I took some white ink and I lightened the upper portion of the painting, which is the furthest away from us. I restored some white there. I kind of planned to do this from the very beginning. That's why I wasn't too concerned with leaving white paper but I think that also contributed to creating the depth of space and of pushing some of those flowers in the background and helping viewers to concentrate on the focal point, on those three yellow flowers surrounded by little purple flowers with a few leaves that are around them. I think the main takeaway from this experiment is that if our paintings fail, we shouldn't give up on them. We should just set them aside, take a break, and after a while, come back to that piece. And maybe we can do something else, or maybe we can add other materials besides pastels. We can use gouache or even acrylics and make that painting work. I think that approach is much better for our artistic morale, so to say. It will help us to feel that we achieved something, that we didn't fail, we have a finished artwork, and also we will end up with a beautiful painting that we can enjoy or give or sell to somebody and let them enjoy it as well. I hope this video was inspirational and helpful. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamara Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!